Um, today, we have Brian Hoffelder with the assistance of uh, Ron Solstice will be taking us through a commercial bid of a 43,400 square foot municipal building in Birmingham, Alabama. It's an actual project that's gonna be taking place later this year. I don't know when exactly. Um, and this is, this is all part of a three-part webinar series that we're doing. So this is the first one, and then each week, next week on Thursday, we'll do another part, the second part, and then the following week, the third part. This one is more about kind of giving you an overview or intro to the project and some of the considerations to, uh, to do the bid. And, this, and the next part next week, we'll be going through some of the key takeoff. We won't, of course, go over it all because that would take many hours but we wanted to give you a good idea and understanding of the steps on doing the takeoff for this particular type of commercial job. Um, and the third part of the webinar, we'll go through the steps of creating the final bid preparation. So I'd like to introduce Brian Hoffelder, who is our estimating and training consultant, and he also plays a key role in our software development. So welcome, Brian, and bring Ron Solstice in. Rod is actually a good friend of mine. I've known him for, I guess, probably almost 20 years. I brought him in as an industry expert. He started as a field electrician, uh, just like so many people in the field did. He, and then he started his own company, uh, bought another company, and at one point had up to 60 electricians in the field. Um, and then he got into the, the electrical estimating business. That was in... Uh, 1999 so he did that for about 17 or 18 years and then just three years ago sold uh, the company but that, that company had up to about 20 estimators doing different types of estimating but mainly I think their, prim their primary focus was electrical uh, and use the electrical bid manager for a, a lot of their bids so I'm going to bring Ron in at various times uh, to give some input on the different parts of, of this uh, webinar so here's the topics we're going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to just talk for a minute about how to download and or organize your drawings. I'm going to use it from a, a website called Plan Hub. There's a, many of those out there now that you can download from, but it's pretty similar. Then we're going to talk about how to set up the drawings to take it off electronically. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time reviewing the drawings. One of the things you want to do at that point is make a dis after you review the drawings, is make a final decision to bid the job. You got to decide if it's really something that you can handle, if there's things that are out of your expertise. And then probably one of the most tedious parts of the preparation is reviewing the specs. Uh, for those of you who have bid small jobs, sometimes the specs either don't exist or they're just uh, uh, a page of notes on the drawings. Um, this one I think has a 50, 60, so I forget how many pages are in the specs, but it's, it's pretty comprehensive. I've seen some that are a lot longer. Um, but we'll talk about that for a little bit. Then we'll talk about how to organize the takeoff. If you've got to set up breakouts, alternates, that kind of thing. If there's any typicals, that's always nice. Like if you're doing a hotel or some kind of a school where you've got typical rooms. And then we'll talk about quotes and addendums. Finally, the last thing to, to, to really think about as you go through this preparation process is how long is it going to take to do the takeoff? I'll give you some general um, ideas on how to estimate it, but be realistic here. Even when you bid small jobs, you know, budgeting that two hours, four hours to do the takeoff is really important. Uh, that's one of the big differences in small jobs versus big jobs. If, if worst case scenario, you have to burn some midnight oil on the, on the last night before the bid, you know, you can, you can spend a few hours uh, taking off or finalizing the bid on a small job. On a job like this, that's not gonna be an option. You're gonna have to be prepared, budget the time, and you know, get so much of this done. Just even sending out quotes, you can't do that at the last minute. So there's a lot more preparation, coordinating and organizing on a large job like this. So let me talk just for a minute about how to download the jobs. I'll bring up a website that's kind of typical here. So this is what a typical website would look like when you download the, or when you go into the website to download your drawings. On a job like this, you're gonna now need to download the plans, which are under this little, category here. Usually it's going to be one giant PDF file that needs to be extracted. And when you extract it, you'll see all the drawings. You also need to download the specs. Same kind of thing here. It'll be one file that you can download and then need to extract. And on this job, they've got six addendums. So those are just documents with uh, addendums that have been added to the, to the drawings. 
So those are the three things you want to download typically. Now, what I would recommend, what most people do is they have a, a, a folder on their system. So what I've done is I've set up a, a folder. I did it under documents. You can do it at the root level, but I've set up a folder called jobs and then a subfolder for the this particular job. And then in that folder, I've got separate subfolders for the plans, for the specs, for the quotes, correspondence, addendums. So you would want to download from the website in from this website into those particular folders so they're available when you go to set it up to and I'm assuming you're going to take this off electronically. So most of this process is assuming that's what's going to be taking place. Okay. So once you've got the drawings in your system, you're going to download them into your to your uh, takeoff program. In this case, we're going to use plants if this is an example. This program has a, a process to bring in the drawings from your whatever folder you've put them in. When you create a new job, you put a job number, a description here. I'm not going to go through the process because it takes a little while. But what you basically do is a you go to that folder where you've got the where you've got the job. In this case, I've got it under Vision EBM, and then here's the job itself. So you would check this here to download the specs or the drawings. I've got the drawings in another file, and then they come into PlanSwift, and then they appear over here on the left. Now here's again another tedious part of the job, which is you got to really do it though. You've got to name each page. When it comes into the to the uh, to the plans to electronic takeoff, these pages don't have names on them. You've got to go and and type that in yourself electron uh, instead of the name it gives it, which is generic. So what I did was I went in here and, and labeled each page with a number and what's on that drawing. So again, that'll take a little while on a, a job like this. It's got a fair number of pages. This is the first page, and that's just typical. They start with a legend. The second page is, so it's got a definition of all the symbols, everything from fire alarm to receptacles, et cetera. This is pretty typical. Uh, they just tell you what each symbol is. The legend here on the next page has a bunch of notes. And then now this job has a complete site plan. So when you get to one of the drawings that has uh, things that you need to measure or count for that matter, you need to set the scale and check the scale. Uh, <laughs> inconveniently, unfortunately, this job, the scale is not correct. Down here in the bottom, you'll see that the scale is supposed to be one inch equals 20 feet. When I set it to that, the scale was not correct. So I had to find some dimensions and actually set up the scale. That's the whole process you've got to do if the scale's not correct. That's what these green lines were. So that I, I dimensioned the length or the horizontal and vertical on the building. You could do it off the parking spaces. You could do it from different places. Um, that happened a lot. So let me just flip through the. It happens more than you would right. think. Um, it's certainly not common, but it's certainly not uncommon either. I mean, it does happen. So you got to check it, and then you got to fix the scale if it's wrong. So just let me give you kind of an overview of how this job is set up, so you get just kind of a picture of what what it's about. There's the site drawing, and then there's three pages for the lighting: first floor, second floor, third floor. So again, I had to set the scale on these. The other thing I did, which I think is going to be helpful on the next webinar, is I highlighted the location of the electric room on each page. So in this case, it's over here on the right. This is where all the lighting panels are. When you go to the second floor lighting, same thing here. There's the electric room kind of in the middle of the building. That's where the lighting panels are and the lighting control panels too. And then here on the third floor, there's a little room with lighting panels. And then there's a whole page for lighting control. They give you the specifics on what they're looking for, the occupancy sensors and that. This is not real complicated, but it's again, it's the kind of thing you're going to need to get a quote on. This is not the kind of stuff you just want to price uh, uh, out of the book, so to speak. You don't want to use retail pricing on this. So then, then they 
it switches over to the power plant. So again, I, I highlighted the main electric room over here where the main service and all the, the panels for the power are. So when we get to the feeders and we get to the home runs, we'll know where to, to send those to. Same thing in the second floor. There's panels here. But it just gives you a good overview of what, you know, what the job's about by just flipping through these pages. And then there's a third floor power plan. And there's the electric room for the third floor. And then it goes into the fire alarm. So that's one of the things we need to think think about here is, are we gonna sub out the fire alarm? Uh, probably on a job like this, most people would. Also the requirements for the fire alarm and the communications and contractors are, you know, they're not looking for somebody that, you know, they're looking for experience, experience certified company. So, but from the electrical aspect, we need to know where all the fire alarm is so we can provide uh, uh, devices and, or boxes and all that. One of the things we'll see in the specs in a couple of minutes is, is what they require. They want the fire alarm system in conduit. There's second floor fire, third floor power uh, fire alarm. And then they get into what they call auxiliary, which is basically the communications parts of the job. All the data, everything from TVs to uh, voice data and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna flip, flip, flip down to the grounding. This this building has a complete grounding grid around the building, and they show you over here the specifications. So these are these are ground rods at these little points right here, and then there's a ground wire that runs 12 inches under the a ground to, for a grounding loop around the whole building. And then there's some stuff that ties into the building. There's some ground uh, grounding bus. There's also where you ground to the building steel and to the to the water and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of grounding in this job. And then they've got mechanical drawings. So they show the location of all the mechanical. I'm going to flip down here. There's a equipment schedule, so we know what all these are as far as the uh, Air handlers, exhaust fans, etc. What the size of conduit wire that's required for each of the mechanical items. You've got chiller pumps down here. You've got some projectors. Some they do a pretty good job here of telling you what they want for the, the hookup to each of these items. Okay, so we'll flip down here here a bit. There's a communications as a fire alarm riser. Sure. I had a question for Ron real quick. Is the communication a single line? Yep. Yeah, Ron, you you I there? Gotta turn him on. Did you get it? Hey Ron, uh, is does this look yeah, like? Not, a pretty, I just turned out his audio. Does this look like a pretty typical project so far to you? It is, it's a pretty very typical project there's a couple of nuances in here um that you know are kind of out of the ordinary the ground loop around the the building obviously um basically for the use of this structure is what they're needing that for and then they've got um i've noticed on here that they've got a uh storm um area on the first level which encompasses the electrical room and the room next to it and the second floor, which is kind of uh, out of the ordinary. And the notes, and again, this is where it comes down to really, you know, when you're reviewing these drawings, is watching them notes for some some of those things because it tells you you can't, you're not allowed to run your conduit through the walls in those two spaces. So it really, it starts limiting yep. what you can do. And, um, it even states that those conduits have to run underground. So now we're gonna, you know, you got a main electrical room buried in in two storm under a, under a storm area that is you can't penetrate. So uh, it becomes a little bit of a challenge to, you know, even, you know when you start your takeoff as to where those raceways have to go. So, but you know, very typical uh, project. All right. I'm going to go down to the the riser diagram for the electrical. We'll actually, you know, we'll be using 
this a little more specifically when we do on the on the next webinar we do take off because this gives you the whole backbone of the the electrical system you know where all the panels are located where the main service is located a couple of things again that are important here it's got a couple of automatic transfer switches so that'll be we need to get part of the, uh, that'll need to be included in our gear quote um, and there's also let me go down to the last page here you can see it on this diagram too there's a generator that's why there's the automatic transfer switches, obviously. So that's another thing typically we need to get a quote on. Let me go back to the outline here just to kind of get back to the beginning. So we talked about how to download the drawings. We talked about checking the scale, labeling the pages. And then we've been doing a, just a quick review of the drawings. Next thing we're going to get to is the specs. But as you go through the drawings, one of the things we need to do is determine what things we need to get a quote or a subcontract on. So this job, there's lighting, obviously, and gear, which are typical for you know almost any size project. There's lighting control here we'll need to get a quote on. Like I just mentioned, there's a generator. There's grounding. We're going to need to get a quote on those ground rods. I think those ground rods are like a couple of grand a piece, and there's a bunch of them. If we're going to sub out the fire alarm, we're going to need to get a quote on that. Even if we're going to do the fire alarm, we're going to need to get a quote on the, the fire alarm system itself, just like you get a quote, a quote on lighting or gear. And then there's a CCTV security system. Again, you'll need to get a quote on that. And then there's a big voice and data part of it, communications. I also noticed, and this is the kind of thing I look for a lot of time, is if there's special stuff like floor boxes or cable tray. There's a bunch of floor boxes there. And again, they're really expensive floor box. A floor box here is that, that anywhere from four to six gang floor boxes that are somewhere in the four, five, six hundred dollar range a piece. So that's the kind of stuff that you should definitely get a quote on. Um, so let's go back now and talk for a minute about the specs. I've downloaded those actually into PlanSwift just so I could show you a few things I highlighted. So the kind of things I'm looking for here are specifications. First thing they tell you is that they want submittals on all the wiring devices and all this stuff that's in this area here. Everything from the disconnect switches to the generator to the fixture supports. They want submittals on all that. Um, so that's stuff that takes time. There's, we need to make an allowance for testing. Again, on a larger project, that's more significant. On the fittings, again, it just says steel set screw. That's not unusual or a big deal. But they do want some middles on those. And I saw this note on flexible conduit. It looks like all the flexible conduit needs to be liquid tight. I think the only exception to that is fixture whips, which they don't want you using any more than a six foot fixture whip. There's gonna be fire stopping involved. On the wiring devices, you'll notice that they're calling out the Hubble 1200 series. That's the premium spec grade. That's not the regular spec grade or commercial grade. So those are a little more expensive. You see down in here, there's the, it's the 5362 series for the receptacles, the 1200 series for the lighting. So those are the more expensive ones. The device plates are stainless steel. And this is a kind of a funny note I thought here. This does kind of prove the fact that uh, a lot of these specifications are boilerplate. They cut and paste them from uh, you know, their uh, other projects and general specifications, because the specifications list fi fire uh, fluorescent fixtures here, and uh, on the lighting schedule, there's not one fixture besides LED fixtures. They're all LEDs, so it's kind of funny that they even mention flore fluorescent fixtures here. <laughs> there's a whole spec here on the on the switchboard that's probably more important to the people quoting it, but you need to be aware of it. Make sure that they quote per the specs. There's a spec on the lighting control. And on the safety switches, they note heavy duty. So again, that's a little more than your maybe your standard commercial job. Here's the fire stopping again. What I'm looking for here, so minimum conduit size is three quarter inch. Again, you kind of need to know that before you start the takeoff. There's the note about the maximum length of the uh, fixture whips being 72 inches or six feet. And here's the big one, in, or in my mind, 
MC cable in Romex is not accepted. So we got to do this whole job in conduit. So that's a that's a big factor there. Okay. So let me bring Ron back in here for what other kinds of things do you look for, Ron, on the, on the specifications? Well, um, as a rundown, um, I look for race weight, race weight types, minimum race weight types, because then everything beyond right. that is going to be for the atmosphere that it's uh, suggested for, whether it be underground or, or in some kind of an explosion proof or, or caustic, you know, atmosphere. Um, Secondly, if fittings, then wire, because sometimes they'll specify uh, different types of wire, especially on the larger conductors going from PHHN to XHHW, so that could be a definite right. cost factor. Um, the uh, devices, like you had mentioned, big could be a big number. If you miss that and you, you go with spec and it's premium spec, or you're jumping yep. from resi grade all the way to premium spec, you could be in. Mm -hmm. You know, some dollars trouble. Um, the uh, spe other specifications are just going to be things that are out of the ordinary. And, you know, raceway style, um, no um, no flexible raceways, no MC cable, um, or, you know, even MC cable where you got to have the, the grounding conductor um, mm -hmm. within the cable other than, you know, the... the uh, aluminum little thick connector that runs through there. Um, and it's probably a good idea that you that as a as a whole, as your bidding jobs, you create a list of the items that you really want to look for. Um, because some of these specifications, this one here being 40 pages long or 50 pages long, um, you could run into specifications that are a thousand pages long. Yep. And you don't want to spend a week trying to read that. No. Yep. And uh, what you want to do is you kind of want to hammer your way down um, and look at those uh, specifications for specific markers that uh, are going to be cost uh, items in your bid um, yep. and, and really kind of idealize out through that. And that goes with all your systems, you know. Um, and I would, you know, again, separating everything out, make, make a big job into a bunch of little jobs. Um, as you're running this thing through. Yep, I think that was what I was trying to um, basically say too. You you learn with a little bit of experience of what kinds of things to look for, and I was trying to highlight those: the the fittings, the devices, the plates, the uh, flexible conduit, uh, minimum raceway size. And again, this job, this this note here that says the fire alarm has to be in raceway. So that that's going to be a big cost factor too. Okay. Uh, is that also, yeah, that changes the design. I mean, it's not just, yep. you know, you, so the contractor's got to be aware of that uh, because it's not just the cable you're running through there. you got to be conscious about um, how the raceway is running through and how many cables are running through because now that fire alarm drawing doesn't really give you that those parameters. So you may think you can run everything in half-inch conduit and you could find yourself yep. running two-inch conduit. So you got to be careful about, you know, even running, you know, setting yourself mm -hmm. up for those. Uh, parameters. So, so even if you're subbing out the fire alarm, the electrical contractor is typically going to provide the raceway. So you got to be aware of the requirements there. So you got to make a, yourself a budget for now. How long is this going to take to do the takeoff here? You know, I would think somewhere between a half an hour and an hour per page for the electrical. Maybe a little less than some of the other stuff, but you got to budget the time here to to do the takeoff and be real, realistic about it. You can't wait to the last day or two to to get this process started. Again, especially with the quoted materials and the, and the subcontract, you need to get that. You need to get on that right away so that you can get uh, information out to the suppliers or contractors that you're going to sub out to. Uh, yeah. So William asks, how do you provide the spec details to your vendors? I would just send them a copy of the document. So it'll be something that's downloaded from either the website or something that's emailed to you. There'll be a uh, there'll be a separate document usually. Sometimes again, they're in the drawings. You know, on a small job with, you know, a, a dozen or half dozen pages, there might be just one sheet that's specifications. So I would either send the suppliers the complete set of drawings, or in the case where the specifications are separate, send them the whole thing. Let them, you know, 
figure out exactly what uh, criteria are important to give a quote. Yeah, a lot of the suppliers will have that information. You could snapshot right, out too on large you know, like if, if you're confident about what you're sending that supplier. You know, like for instance, the floor boxes on the schedule page uh, symbol legend, they give you the specifications for those. You might want to cross check right. that to the specifications because sometimes they'll put two different types in and then now you're sending an so, addendum out to try to figure that out. <laughs> right. <laughs> or an RFI, yeah. One one customer or one attendee just noted, Eric noted that he uploads them to Dropbox and shares that link to make it easier to share with his um, vendors. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That works good too. The the drawings in this or the, the files in this job aren't that large. Um, you can email them pretty easily, but again, you get into a bigger job, you may have to send them through Dropbox because they're too big to attach to a, to an email. These are fairly manageable for a large job. Some email systems auto handle that. I know the, the Google G Suite or Gmail system automatically uploads it to Google Drive and then just attaches it to the right. email to allow them to click a link to download the file. But yeah, there's everybody has their methods probably. How, how can you extract just one drawing to send to a vendor for pricing? For example, the, the lighting schedule, Paul asked this question. So what I typically do when I download the incomplete set of drawings is you know, save them on your system obviously. When you open up the drawings in uh, Adobe or any of the PDF, PDF viewers, you can print the drawings to a file. So you would just find the file that has the page you want. And when you go to print, you have an option to, to save the whole thing or to save specific pages. So you could just print that one page to a PDF and then attach that to your email. Um, is that clear, Derek? I think so. It, 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 Windows 10 includes a PDF printer now. So just as you said, right. you can choose to print that one choose that as your printer instead of it maybe you have some printer in the office or at home um, choose the PDF I forget what it what the actual term is on it but it's like PDF printer I think there's it's a Microsoft PDF Got that's it. the that's the name of the printer you choose when you go to print it so instead of printing it you just tell it to to print to Microsoft PDF or or you can do other programs too but Windows 10 has that in everybody's system and then when you choose that option you can choose what pages so I have a couple other questions here uh, thanks for oh thanks for letting us see that we all struggle with the equipment says Mark <laughs> <laughs> and, and then one more by William how long would you budget for this size of a project I'm gonna bounce that back to Ron, I, I got a number in my mind, but how long would you think just for the takeoff process on this, Ron? We've got 37 drawings in this. Right. If they're they're all electrical, um, you're probably going to want to put about 40 hours, maybe 44 hours on this job. Um, yep. You know, a good estimator would take about that long. That, that's one of the numbers I've always right. used historically is an hour per page, you know, gives you a good starting point. Uh, right, right. Because there's going to be a couple of drawings in here that are going to take one and a half, maybe that. even two hours yep. to, to digest through. And then, of course, you got the specifications on top of that. A question by Bud. Uh, do you typically include the takeoff time in your bid price, or is that part of your overhead pricing? Good question. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing we would talk about, especially in the last one. But it, that's definitely part of your overhead. Um, you know, you, it's basically a sunk cost, whether it's two hours or 40 hours. It's just part of your overhead. Uh, but you can't pass it on as far as the bid is concerned, unless maybe you're doing a change order and you you think you can get them to pay your time to do the estimate for the change order and that that's even probably a long shot but yeah you know, somebody invites you to bid a job and you you include that in the cost of the the job and you're just gonna you know that's gonna put you out of the out of the uh, 
pricing, you know, as far as your, it's going to include cost that nobody else is putting in. All right. Perfect. So, yeah, the estimate is part of your overhead, part of just running the business. I don't have any. All right. Other Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Yes. We will see you if you're interested in the next webinar, same time next week, uh, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. And we're actually going to go through some live examples of doing a take, do some takeoff from the important parts of this job. We'll take off some feeders, we'll take off some lighting, we'll take off some uh, power and some switch gear and give you a good overview of that. All right. Thanks again, everybody. We'll go ahead yeah. and sign off. Thanks, Ron. All right. All Thanks, right. Ron. Thank you. Bye now.